Hi, this is the second part of the animals chapter. Uh, previously, I already done a video on uh, animal, so this is the second part. Because, uh, like I say, uh, animal is a very big chapter, uh, along with life cycle, and the life cycle is built on this animal chapter. So you must be good at this chapter, lah. And uh, this video, the information on this video, uh, is not difficult to understand, but it's uh, difficult to memorize because there's a lot of information. Or you need to know every single characteristic of the different kind of uh, animal group. Okay, so hopefully by now you should know the six animal groups. Uh. Okay, you, should, you need to know how to spell them as well because you'll be tested. Okay, so uh, animals is living things. Okay, and then uh, the six animal groups are your mammals, your fishes, your amphibians, your reptiles, your birds, and then your insects. Okay, so just a quick example on how one of the ways that during exam mode they'll te test you are uh, is they'll show you a certain animals okay for example maybe they show you that uh, this animal it has uh, three body parts uh, then you must know it is an insect okay or they'll ask you if a certain animal belongs to which animal group and then why it is the animal group so for example uh, they show you a dog then they ask you is a dog a mammal then you must say yes it is a mammal and then they ask you why you have to say that uh, because dog have uh, hair, or you can say dog has fur, and uh, it feeds young with milk. So that's why you need to know every single characteristic of every uh, animal group. Okay, so let's look at the most popular animal group, uh, mammals, because they are very closely related to us. Okay, later I'll tell you why they are closely related to us. So anyway, all the pictures shown on this screen, right, is actually mammals, but. Uh, they, are the, they are the common ones, uh, but they are not the only ones. There are more mammals than others, of course. Okay, so how do you, how do I know that all of these animals are? Why are they mammals? Okay, so all of them, or all mammals, will have outer covering of hair, or can say outer covering of fur. Okay, and then uh, they feed their young with milk. Okay, uh, most of the mammals they give birth, but there are some mammals that can actually lay eggs. Uh. Later we will talk about them. Uh, and most mammals actually live on land. There are some mammals that live in water, but generally most mammals live on land. Okay, so you need to know these two characteristics here. Okay, because uh, during exam, if they mention anything about these two, you must immediately know that this animal that they are talking about belongs to the mammal group. Okay, because mammals, only mammals have this kind of characteristic. Okay, so uh, as, as I was mentioning earlier, um, there are some special mammals, uh, certain mammals that uh, behave differently from most other mammals. Uh, and I put two stars for this slide is because uh, out of so many anim animal groups, right, uh, the most commonly tested special types of animals is in the mammals group. So uh, let's look at some of them. Okay, uh, as I was telling you, most mammals they actually give, uh, give birth. But there are some mammals that is like, that actually reproduce by laying eggs. In fact, there's only two mammals that can do that. Uh. The first one is a platypus. Okay, it is this one. Okay, the one with a with a dark beak. That's how they are easily recognized. Okay, but it, it is not a duck, of course. And then the other one is a spiny and an eater. So the question is, since they don't uh, lay, they don't give birth, sorry, but they lay eggs. Why are they still classified under mammals? Uh? Reason very simple. Because just now I already mentioned. Okay. Uh, mammals must have outer covering of hair and feed their young with milk. Both of them have outer covering of hair and um, they feed their young with milk. Lah. Although they lay eggs, but they still feed their young with milk. Huh? Which is a very important uh, reason why we classify them under uh, mammals group. Okay, uh, There's no no mammals that fly uh, except for one mammal and that's the bat. That's why bat is so special. Uh. Bat is the only mammals that can fly. And same reason why is um, bat a mammal. Uh, is because uh, bat has a uh, outer covering of hair as well as a pea is young with milk so that's why bat is still classified under mammals okay there are many mammals that actually live on live in water okay so these are some examples so they also have the characteristic about mammals I mentioned earlier okay but these are not the only ones uh. okay there are more than that for example your sea lion your walrus okay they are also mammals okay now let's look at fish uh. so how do we know if something is a fish Okay, uh, all fishes they live in water. Uh, there are some fishes that can come out of water for a long period, but ultimately they still need to go back to uh, the water because that's their natural habitat. Okay, however, although all fishes live in water, uh, 
but doesn't mean they live in water means they are fish because just now for example i show you whale and dolphin for example they live in water right but they're not fish okay so the other most more important characteristic is they must have gills now this is something that is very special about fish okay the reason why uh, fish can breathe in water is because they have gills but they don't have lungs like us so when they come on land they cannot breathe that's why they'll die on land whereas for us we have lungs right and lungs is used for breathing on land that's why when we go into the water we cannot breathe because we don't have gills okay so now since i'm talking about this uh, by now you should realize eh, then what about uh, whales and dolphins so same thing like whales and dolphins are mammals right so they breathe with lungs so at the end of the day they actually still comes to the surface of the water to breathe oh, they don't have gills they cannot breathe in water actually so um, i think most of you should know what a gills is but if you don't know this is where you can find the gills or oh, if you go to the market usually um, that's how people choose fish uh. okay so if you open up the gills you can see the inside so this is a close-up of how the gills the inside of the gills look like okay you need to know where it is uh. okay so uh, most fishes they can uh, they reproduce by laying eggs there are some fishes that can give birth but generally most fishes lay eggs okay uh, most fishes cannot survive outside of water for a long period of time uh. but of course like i told you some fishes can okay they can come out of water for very long okay and they all have scales uh. scales is this uh, hard covering uh, most of the fishes we eat okay in fact all the fishes we eat have the scales removed already so that's why a cooked fish you don't get to see the uh, scales but if you go to look at um, or you go to the wet market before they remove the scales right you go and touch it you can feel that uh, it's very hard so the purpose of scale as mentioned uh, in the previous few videos is to protect the fishes from injury lah. Okay, it's like an armor for them okay so uh, of course there are some fish that's special okay uh, for example, your guppy, your molly, and your sword tail, they are very small fishes. Uh, actually, they look quite similar. Okay, the special thing about them is that they can uh, reproduce by giving birth, whereas most of the other fishes reproduce by laying eggs. Okay, and some fishes, as shown here, like your catfish, your shark, your rays, right, they don't have outer covering on scales. Okay, a catfish, is just in case you are wondering why is it called a catfish, is because it has whiskers. Uh. Okay. Um, the other one that uh, some fishes they can come out of water for long duration okay up to even a few hours okay your snake head your mud skipper or lung fish yes yeah, i'll mention here yeah this is the snake head uh, and this is the mud skipper okay a snake head is called snake head, head uh, largely because it's very long it looks like a snake okay so they can come out of water for a very long period of time uh. okay what about uh, reptiles now all reptiles right they have dry scales so just now i'm talking about fish scales right but for reptiles their scales is dry okay and they all breathe with lungs uh. so uh some reptiles likes to Im immerse themselves in water right to go in the water but actually they still have lungs okay later i'll talk about them uh. and uh most reptiles actually reproduce by laying eggs okay so so some common examples are lizard your crocodile okay so crocodile like i told you like it likes it, it often goes into the water but it still breathe with lungs uh okay uh turtle tortoise so turtle and tortoise right you realize they are uh they have a layer of shell right but other than the layer of shell right actually generally most of their other body parts is still covered with uh, uh dry scales that's why they are still classified under reptiles okay and your snake lah. okay if you can touch them you realize that same thing these dry scales right they are also quite hard so it also protects an animal from injury okay the other uh, special uh, animal that we like to talk about is our amphibia, la, special animal group. Why are they special? La? Because uh, they are the only uh, animal group that the animals in it right, can have a huge change in their organs. Okay, so um, during exam, if they ask you what, what is the characteristic of amphibian, actually they are always looking for this answer. Okay, amphibian lives in water and lives, on, lives in water and on land. Oh, so but but what does it actually means what does it mean that live on land and in water oh, the, the, the thing about amphibia is that when they are young right they live in water and they have gills just like fishes so a common example is the tadpole la. the tadpole is the young of a frog so when it's young right it breathes with uh, gills just like a fish but as it grows up right his whole organ change okay the gills will be gone and then it will be replaced with uh, lungs well that's why that 
uh, MTB is very special. You know, their internal organ change, organs changes. Okay, and then when they become adult, right? Okay, for example, a frog or a toad, right? Uh, when on land, they breathe with lungs. Okay, but when they go to the water, they still can breathe, and they breathe with their skin. Okay, when their skin is wet, uh, they can breathe with the skin. Uh. Okay, so that's why they are able uh, in the adult stage they can live on land and in water. Okay, and uh, most amphibians they lay eggs. Okay, so some very common example uh. Okay, uh, it is best to memorize all these four names. Why? Because, uh, from my experience, they only generally for amphib amphibians, uh, exam only test you these four. And of course, the most popular one that uh, exams like to test for amphibians is frog and toads, uh. But I have, uh, I usually use, I usually, my experience is that most of them will only test you this form. Okay, so these are the common four types of amphibians. And uh, the reason why they are amphibians, like I mentioned, they live on land and in water. Okay, let's talk about uh, birds. Okay, now, uh, the, the most well-known characteristic of, of birds is uh, feather. Lah. Okay, so all birds have feather and only birds will have feather. So once you see the word feather, you must immediately know that it is a bird, okay? And birds uh, all have wings, uh. however, not all birds can fly. Uh. They all have wings, but doesn't mean they all can fly. Okay, they have beaks. Uh, for most other animals, maybe they have uh, teeth. Uh. So uh, the teeth allows them to chew or make the food into smaller pieces. But animals don't have, uh, birds don't have teeth, so they have beaks, which help them pack the food to make it smaller. Okay, and uh, all birds lay eggs. Lah. Okay, no birds give birth, lah. all birds lay eggs. Okay, uh, some birds actually don't fly. Actually, it's quite common. I think you all should know this. Some birds actually don't fly, mainly because they are too heavy. Uh, some birds actually, they can, uh, they don't live in water actually. To be, uh, when I say live in water, what I mean is they can uh, uh, live on water and then they can dive into the water to get food. So they, they actually depends on water for survival. Okay. And their natural habitat is on water. Okay, so some special birds, okay, um, your ducks, your pelican, and your penguin, okay, they are birds that can dive into the water, okay, mainly to get food, lah, okay, and in fact, penguins spend most of his time under the water, so that's why they are considered special. Now, I think you all should know what's a duck and a penguin, lah. that's why I never show you all the picture. Uh, this is a pelican, okay, so it also depends on the rope. Uh, it's natural habitat is also the water. Okay, some birds that cannot fly is your cassowary, your ostrich, your emu, and your kiwi. The this three right, uh, they are quite big in size. Uh. Okay, as you can see, I uh, I didn't show uh, ostrich because uh, I think you should know what's an ostrich. So cassowary and uh, emu, okay, they are quite big in size. Uh, and that's the reason why they cannot fly. Too heavy. Uh, as for kiwi, kiwi is actually very small. Uh. Oh, probably maybe it's just a bit bigger than an adult feast. Okay, so why is it that uh, it still can't fly? The reason is because kiwi they have wings that's very 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 tiny, so small that sometimes you can even see them. Also because kiwi's uh, wings are so small, that's why it's not able to let them fly. But they have very good sense of hearing. Okay, now uh, there's also some birds that actually fly and we always think that they don't. It's a misconception. That it's good that you know. Uh, this up, uh. So chicken, chicken can actually fly, it's just that they cannot fly high, they cannot fly for a long distance. Uh, but if you ever live in a farm, you should see chicken flying around. Uh. Okay, it's quite common, they just they cannot, they cannot fly high. Uh, ducks, okay, although ducks, uh, most of the time they spend on water, okay, because they, they, that's their natural habitat, uh, but uh, duck actually can fly. Uh. In fact, they can fly quite far. Okay, the other one is peacock. Uh. Okay, and peacock, although it looks heavy, but actually peacock can fly quite far as well. So these are three birds that we always think that they don't fly, but actually they do fly. Okay, uh, the last animal group, insect. Okay, all insects will have uh, six legs, or you can say three pair of legs, it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, it also have three body parts. Okay, uh, it also have a outer layer of uh, exoskeleton. So I think previously I already mentioned so what is called exoskeleton uh, exo means outside uh, outside skeleton you should know uh, it's called is bones so may, basically so exoskeleton means bones on the outside so their bones is on the outside as their outer covering 
for us our bones is on the inside lah. so that's the main difference between uh, human or mammals with uh, insect insect exoskeleton their bones is on the outside so because the exoskeleton is on the outside right uh, it serves as a layer of protection uh, for them as well uh, okay so the most important thing that you need to know about insect is these two lah. because uh, Actually, in primary school, they don't test you exoskeleton. Okay, so during exam, you see the word three body parts or six legs. Immediately, you must know they are insects. Okay, most insects actually reproduce by laying eggs. Okay, but there are some insects like the apids, right? They can actually reproduce by uh, giving birth. They can actually change, lah. Okay, apids can change. Uh, can sometimes lay, sometimes give birth. They can change. Oh, so this is how apids look like. Okay, some insects have wings, but not all of them have wings. Okay, so this is a uh, how a typical insect will look like lah. Okay, this one without this without wings of course. So uh, I can you can see uh, there's actually three body parts. Okay, so this is the three body parts two and three uh, In case you cannot see it, okay. Uh, if if you want to know, this is called a head. This is called the thorax. It is actually not in the syllabus, ah. oh, but it's good just to know this is the abdomen. Okay, so uh, if you look closely, ah, the thorax ah, is where all the legs is attached to. So all the six legs is always attached to the thorax of the insect. Okay, so this is the three body parts. Ah. Oh, sorry, abdomen, ah, I spell wrong. Yeah, ED. M E N. Okay, so it's a spider uh, insect. Uh. Okay, so as I was telling you, hey, in case you forgot, just I circle it already. So they must have six legs and three body parts, right? So let's look at spider. You can count it. Four plus four, eight legs. Second thing, one body part, two body part. Totally does not fit the characteristic of insect, right? That's why spider is not insect. Mm, in case you want to know, spider belongs to which animal group? It belongs to Arachnida which is not taught in primary school as well so are we human beings are we considered animals okay so to know if we are animals we have to look at our own body parts our characteristic huh? okay so we have hair right i'm not talking about our the hair on our head i'm talking about the hair over our body if you look closely on our for example your hands and legs right they are very, very tiny strands and short strands of hair oh, so these are still hair lah. okay so we do have hair okay uh, we reproduce by give, giving birth. Okay, human beings don't lay eggs, right? We give birth. Okay, um, we feed our young with milk. Okay, and most of us, okay, not sorry, all of us live on land. So just like uh, a certain uh, animal group that we have previously talked about. So if you look at it, the most important thing is that this one, other covering of hair, feeds young with milk. Oh, so if you you have managed to remember. Um, the characteristics of uh, animal groups, you realize that this actually satisfies the criteria of a mammal. So, we are mammal. In fact, we are like, we are a very, uh, we are a very normal mammal because we also give birth, we also live on land. We are not any special mammal here. Uh, other than the fact that we can, we, have, uh, more, we are more intelligent. So, uh, that's why we are considered animal because mammal is an animal. Okay? Okay, so uh, I know this is a very uh, okay. Uh, I know that this chapter has a lot of information, especially this video. But as I was telling you, uh, this is one of the more important chapters this year. So uh, it is best that you go and memorize all the information if you can about the different characteristics of living things, and also to go and re remember the special type of mammals. Okay, not special types of uh, animals. Sorry. So. Uh, if you can do it lah, but if you can't, at least you must be able to remember all this. Oh, so these are the key characteristics that will tell you whether or not which animal groups it belongs to. So, for example, once they say ah oh, feather, then you know it's birds. Once they say three body parts are, oh, you know it's insect. Oh, so in case you cannot remember, ah uh, then at least you must be able to memorize this lah. But again, I emphasize again, if you can, it's still best to memorize all the characteristics. Of all the animal groups, as well as certain special type of animals in each animal groups. Okay, that's all for today.